Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of ASBSD Videocasts. I'm Wade Pogany, Executive Director for ASBSD, and today's topic is talking about conducting effective meetings with school boards and what should school boards know when it comes to parliamentary procedure. Joining me today uh, in this discussion is Dr. Randy Royer. Randy is the Director for Board Development and Mr. Gary Kaufman, who is the Director for Policy Services and Legal Services. Thank you gentlemen for being here today. We've been talking about um, effective board meetings and the, the procedures that they use in those board meetings, the, the way they conduct themselves, the procedures that uh, they follow. Um, and when we think about procedures and the proper conduct for the meetings, we, we think about Robert's Rules of Order. And most schools adopt these as a protocol uh, in their, their board policies. But I'm wondering, is there any kind of a legal requirement that, that Robert's Rules be followed? No, there's nothing in statute or administrative regs in the state of South Dakota that require any politically elected governing board to adopt the Roberts Rules of Order. If Roberts Rules of Order, and, and I would totally agree that most school districts and boards have it in policy to follow in some way, shape, or form Roberts Rules of Order, that is strictly because of board policy or in some cases where a school board, if not in policy, at the reorganization meeting in July have adopted uh, the Roberts Rules of Orders to be the procedure followed. But absolutely nothing in statute that requires Roberts Rules to be followed. Okay. Gary, you were talking earlier about some concerns that, um, that arise when schools adopt Robert's Rules as they are written and just uh, use them that way. Tell me about that a little bit. Two primary concerns that I have about any you know, local government body adopting the Robert's Rules of Order. First is many people will view them as being totally cumbersome, complex, difficult to nail and difficult to use. And if I may, here's just an example. This is the 10th edition of Robert's Rules of Order. It's over 750 pages long. It, there is now an 11th version of uh, over 800 pages. Very few people will be experts in the application of Robert's Rules of Order. The other very significant concern I have about a governing body that adopts Robert's Rules of Order is I think a lot of people don't recognize that these rules were not made for political subdivisions such as school boards. They were made for general assemblies and in going through those you can find instances where the Roberts Rules of, of Order are in direct conflict with South, South Dakota statute. By way of example, Roberts Rules of Order says uh, if there's a conflict of interest that the governing board member has the governing board member should not vote. South Dakota law is you shall not vote. You shall not participate. Another example is when it comes to executive session. Uh, Robert's Rules of Order says decisions can be made in executive session. That is totally contrary to South Dakota statute that says discussions in executive session, if there is to be action on them, must be done in open session. So those are the two most significant concerns I have about just blanket adoption of the rules. Yeah, you would agree though that some kind of a procedure for decision making and motions, we need something like that. Oh, uh, I, I would But we just have to be careful about adopting carte blanche the whole rule and then getting caught between statute and, and those rules. Totally agree. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Randy, talk about some of the basic procedures that boards need to know. Um, what are some things that they need to study to be proficient uh, in terms of Robert's rules so that uh, their boards are their board mean, meetings are effective? Well basically just keep it very simple. Um, make a motion, a second, then there's discussion and then a vote on that motion. You can amend that motion, uh, you can adjourn, you can move to go in executive session, um, but you know it's, it's very basic stuff. So keep it, keep the procedures to a point where the decision's been made and it also allows for people to have a discussion. Exactly. And, and, and do that. And also do it in the order, in the proper order. You know, if you make an amendment to a motion, you have to decide that before you make the, mm -hmm. the uh, decision on the motion. And some people lump them all together and, and try to make things efficient, but they just make it messy. Yeah. Does, does ASBSD have some resources for them to use yes, in case they want to <laughs> make sure they have some We have procedures. a handy dandy little card right here. 
uh, free for asking that has some of the more common um, uh, actions by boards through parliamentary procedure and Robert's rules um, simplified version yeah that's all you need versus an 800 page book so if, if I may just interject as well not only do we have and Randy has those cards but we do have sample policies online that directly relate to uh, rules of procedure um, I've just finished and we'll be reviewing those in the very near future uh, some sample changes because even our samples basically talk right now about if in doubt Robert's Rules of Order shall control or a blanket adoption of Robert's Rules and the recommendation that is going before the policy committee is to adopt a policy that says Robert's of Rules of Order shall be used as a guide but not intended to be controlling or and so strict compliance is not required because again as we just talked about earlier there's inconsistencies between Robert's rules of order and state law so there are some revisions coming through the rep network right now so there'll be a sample policy that boards could look at and, and your recommendation is that we adopt Robert's rules but simply as a guide not as a hard fast rule correct some of those things uh, I'm curious what are some common you know mistakes and errors that boards make when they use uh, parliamentary procedure or Robert's rules are there some common things that we do that are, are ineffective one of the more common ones is to start a discussion before there is a motion and a second certainly before you have a motion sometimes it's necessary to have some background information on the motion uh, but the discussion amongst the board members shouldn't start until there's a motion and a second and then there's discussion So get that on the table first exactly and then open the discussion and the then open up. the discussion and make sure it's very clear Exactly what the motion is another thing that we do quite often is someone uh, May su suggestion about something and, and rather than making a formal motion so moved and Okay, so what did you actually make a motion of? we're not very clear and even the person taking the minutes for that we're like okay exactly how we're going to word this yeah. so be very careful when you make motions and be very clear in the wording that you use because the wording of the motion is actually the decision that the board is going to vote on exactly. it's not, not just a concept or a topic it's, no, the it's not just uh, something like that yeah no be very specific in your wording yeah I would say another common mistake is a lot of times in a governmental body or in any body decision making you'll hear somebody say call the question mm -hmm. and a lot of times there's a misunderstanding that to call the question is actually a, a, a motion to move the previous question and because it's a motion it requires a second and because it's a motion after it's seconded that motion is debated and and once because that motion basically stops debate on the underlying motion it takes a two-thirds majority of the governing board to vote to stop debate so then you can go vote on the original motion to simply call the question or move the previous question doesn't in and of itself stop debate to vote on the underlying motion because essentially you're taking the right of other people to talk away and that should be a decision made not just a well I've decided we're going to end debate correct and do that yes. sure and again it's a matter of the proper order of the way things happen mm -hmm. sometimes that gets messed up as well I'm, I'm curious what is the president's role in all this I mean they're in charge of the meeting um, you know is is their decision-making power any uh, of any importance with Robert's rules or the procedures that we have here when there's a, a dispute on the order of things or if the uh, question is called or whatever it's the chairperson's the president's role to decide those yeah. and if there's an appeal to that decision and it goes to the majority uh, of the board as well to make that ultimate decision yeah but the board chair has a lot of power there so the presidents really need to know Robert's rules at least the basics of it and the conduct of the meeting in, in that process the guidelines yeah, yeah not strict adherence to it but certainly yeah. the guidelines of proper parliamentary procedure yeah 
So we have uh, resources for school boards to use uh, in terms of problem procedure. Uh, we encourage you to uh, study and, and uh, get some training uh, on those pieces. And we really encourage you to look at the new policies that are, that are coming out that will help you understand the procedures as a guide, uh, not just as a hard, fast rule. Correct. Yes. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you. Thank you.